but yeah, no, like there's a lot I'll of tell you. <laughs> there's a lot of people like that where it's like you are just such an ass, right? And you contribute nothing. You and are like, you are the true definition of an NPC. And it's like you could change that. You could be nice. You could just not be a dick. Right. You could decide to help people. It's free. Or like, be a better. Why? Why? What happened? Well, I was I just walking. My other All question, I was doing was walking. Sorry. My other question about it is, we were looking at how much get out it of my way to get a movie ticket at AMC and to get food. And that's what a lot of people do is like they buy food at the concession stand, right? For yeah. two people, it would cost like sixty dollars to get popcorn, two tickets, some nachos, and a drink. Yeah. So, I guess my question is, why would you spend all of this money? To go to a movie that is got a lot of themes of morality. Like it's just a like a, a moral movie, like a, a feel moral good movie. moral movie. Yeah. But and, you're an immoral person. And then you are a dick directly after. Like, what's the point? Like, did you not learn anything? I'm telling no, like, no, why? Jill. I'm telling you, animal. Why did you spend all the money then to go to it? Because they have why no, didn't they you have stay no, home and have sex for free. They because have no critical thought. They're just like, oh, action, oh. Uh. Right, and that's well, all they think about. There's a lot of people like that in the world, Jill. A lot, and like they don't have the capacity for critical thought. They they can't do it. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's not something that they can do. It's like if I was to take uh, the main character of Flowers for Algernon, like pre serum oh, no, oh, no, and tr seen. and try and and teach him rocket science. <laughs> the whole book is about like, well, this guy is limited. This guy is, li and there's nothing wrong with in that case because it's like a just a he genetic thing. It, yeah. But there's, but a there's lot other people who can help. It. These people can help it, and they are limited by their lack of empathy and lack of trying to be empathetic. So what I'm saying is like, there's certain people that I excuse on their limitations. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to a guy in a wheelchair and be like. Wow, you can't walk. Why are you limited in this capacity? It's like, okay, well, then I'm that would, make, that would make you the dick. But, like, what I'm saying is there are other people who choose to be emotionally limited. Like, they can't understand. They, they refuse to try and understand empathy. They refuse to try and be a good person. Everything in life is like, oh, well, how do I turn this into a way for me to get ahead? Right. Or anything and you could say like well no that's not what they're doing no it is because like jokes are a social currency mm -hmm. and if you are purposely trying to turn pain not and i don't mean like add levity like it'd be one thing if like i tried to make a joke like a tone deaf joke to make you feel better jill after you got hurt mm -hmm. that's one thing it's another thing if i was like i don't know you i'm there with nate you fall down and crack your skull open and i say like <laughs> uh, something like, oh, well, look at how dumb this idiot is to make Nate laugh. Right. And I know that's going to hurt you. And it's not at all to provide levity or, like, improve the situation or anything. Like, there's... And, and the reason I clarify that is because there's a lot of talk of, like, policing jokes and stuff. Like, a lot of people are like, well, Pete Davidson... Yeah, maybe his dad was a firefighter who died in 9-11, but he can't make that joke. That guy's right. Oh, I my didn't gosh. see him. I know, I know, I didn't I know. see him. That guy randomly turned around. I don't know why. What is with the enemy pathing in this game? It is one of the worst enemy pathings I have ever seen in a video game, ever. Hey, hey I'm a a trophy. I have never seen over 50 people have fallen to your relentless okay. attacks. Uh, so, basically, like, jokes are a social currency, and, like... You can use them to build up and improve, if even if they're offensive. Like yeah. Pete Davidson telling a joke about 9-11 is supposed to provide levity and make the American people feel better. It's not supposed to make them get angry. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be like, yes, there's this tragedy, but it's been 22 years. Maybe we can all laugh a little at just this dumb thing I'm saying. Isn't this stupid? And right. usually it's not at somebody who's right in front of him's expense. Right. I mean, like, literally, it's usually at his. Yeah. But, like, people will police that guy and be like, no, you can't make that joke. That's offensive. You can't say that. And it's like, no, you can say whatever the fuck you want. But, like, sometimes you are being a dick. And it's like, if, if the whole purpose of what you're saying is not to build anyone up, it's just to tear down, it's not to provide social commentary... Because mm -hmm. there are teardown jokes that are social commentary. It's not you to can, make anyone feel better. You can disagree with Dave Chappelle all you want, but there's a few of his jokes that are like, 
offensive that are about social commentary. Right. Like, and you can disagree with that commentary, and you can hate him for it, but there are certain jokes he's told that, there are certain ones I think are just mean. There's other ones he's told that I think are just, like, poking fun at groups of people, and if you don't like that, that's fine, but I also don't think his whole point is to spread hate. It's to be like, look how dumb this idea is mm -hmm. that these people are spreading, this idea. Um, you know, and it's the same way, like, if somebody makes... There's a difference between making fun of someone to provide levity and try and improve things and making fun of someone in order to tear them down. And I think a lot of people don't understand and they don't want to understand. They just want to be the funny guy or they just want to be the guy that everybody likes yeah. or they just want to be the guy who's better than everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is to them. It's not to improve. It's not to provide commentary. It's not to build up. It's just to be like, look at me. I'm the center of attention. I'm the main character. This dumb bitch just fell down in front of me. They're just an NPC in my life. That is how a lot of people think. Is like, I'm the main character. You're all NPCs in my life. I'm God. You're nothing. And there was not and, a single person who asked me if I was okay. And it's extremely dangerous, like that, that way of thinking. Because you can use it to justify anything you want. Right. And any kind of person you want to be. You are right. And everything you do is okay. Because you're the main character. It's your story. Well, that, that's this, a... the One last thing. Yeah, this sorry. country teaches everybody that. Yeah. This country from birth teaches you you're so damn special. Everything you do is perfect. You're fine. You can be anything. You can do anything. Then you get in the real world and you can't do that stuff. But these people, they have this idea that you can and that anything they do is fine. So they behave in the way of anything I do is fine. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with anything I do. And then we're surprised that this entire country is a bunch of psychos. But it's not surprising. When you raise everyone to think, like, empathy is not important, anything you do is fine, you're the best ever, of course everyone's going to be a psycho. There's no consequences to anything I do. Nope, and there's no consequences to being a kid. Like, if there's another kid who breaks their teeth open on the sidewalk now, and another kid makes fun of them, the school would just be like, that's not okay. And that's it. Like, in the past, your parents would beat your ass. Right. And yeah, maybe that's not great, but you sure wouldn't do it again. Mm -hmm. If this was the 80s and somebody said to that to me when I fell down, it would have been perfectly normal and socially acceptable for you to beat the shit out of that person. Yes, and, yeah, pretty much. and no cop would say anything. Yeah. Because everyone would be like, yeah, that makes sense. Actually, there's still like a lot of... a dick. There's a lot of places in the country where still no cop will say anything to you. Right. For doing certain things like that. Get so yeah, I mean, like, but it's just... It's gross, and it's the way this country, like the West, I think, not just America, the West mm -hmm. operates, is every individual is God, every individual can do whatever they want, uh, you're so damn special, but then at the same time, they conflict themselves on that because it's like only to a point, like if you, if I make a joke to provide levity and it's about the wrong kind of person, then I'm evil. But if I make a joke to provide levity and it's about the right kind of person, then it's funny. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Like, there's so many social and power dynamics dragged into everything in the West that it kind of makes it impossible to have free discussion and to know where the line is. And also, it, it also just kind of makes you feel like, well, no wonder all these people are psychotic. There's no consistent messaging. There's no parenting providing consistent messaging. There's no government providing consistent messaging. There's there's just no consistent messaging on what is moral. There's so, also the problem now where if you're a white person and anything you say pretty much you're just going to get demonized for. Well, you're going to be called racist if it's about the wrong person. And yeah. That happened the other day at my work. There's this really nice girl who I met who's a teenager. Uh, I think she's in high school. And she was just doing her job. She's one of the people who like takes orders for the to-go stuff. Mm -hmm. And she was taking an order from somebody, and it was these two people who also work there, and they were speaking Spanish, and she was like, English, please, because she doesn't understand Spanish. Were they the, were they customers, or did you say they, they worked there? Work there. They okay. worked there. I've, and they can speak that. English, they just chose not to, okay. this little white girl. And okay. she was trying to just say, like, could you please speak English, like, in a nice way. She wasn't trying to be rude. These people took it in a mean way, 
went to the manager's office mm -hmm. and told on her and was like, she's so mean, she's bullying us for our, um, the way we speak. Okay, well, can I talk to this guy? Yeah. Great to see you back so quickly and in one piece. I must return to my family, but before I leave, this is for you. I found a map showing where scholars are planning to burn books and other sources of knowledge. Please be careful and let the future reunite us. I'll give your blessings to my family. What's with this camera angle? I didn't offer my blessings to your family. <laughs> you can give them wherever you want, but they're not coming from me. And why is you carrying a dead baby in that backpack? Like, that's the perfect oh, size. Thank you for giving blessings to my family. I'm gonna go tell them that. So, she got upset when she found that out, and she... Yeah, because they called her racist and accused her of it. And she, it... They, they were trying to get her fired. Yeah, and this, it... is, this is a targeted thing, by the way. If you are darker skinned Latino and you approach a white little petite white teenage girl like literally like this is a girl you could like throw over your shoulder and like toss across a football she's field. basically still a kid I yes. think she's only like six this is a child you right. are you are a grown ass man approaching uh, no it was grown ass women whatever approaching a child and saying this shit and talking in a language you know that she doesn't speak and you know that, and then you get mad when she says, I don't speak that language. How would I come up to you and talk in Mandarin Chinese? Right. Like, well, John Cena can talk in Mandarin Chinese. If he comes up to me and I don't know Mandarin Chinese, am I a racist? Because I don't know that? I just don't know it. It doesn't make sense. I mean, I mean, like, how about this? How about you're a racist for moving to a country that speaks primarily English and refusing to learn the language, except you know the language. That's the problem. Right. Like, if you didn't know it, of and then, course that reasoning I just gave would be stupid, right? And then you get mad when the people that live in that country don't know your language. Right, but like, yeah. if I if I was to say, like, oh, you don't know English? Well, you're clearly a racist. Everyone would be like, no. Right. So how come it goes the other way? Whatever way you can. <laughs> I stand before you. We found the place. It's just as you described it. I suspect he'll want to deal with this himself, and quickly. Best we say nothing to the others. A wise course of action. Truth be told, I'll be happy when this business is done. Soon, my friend, soon. Today should see the last of them put to torch. Boy, come here. You still have the letter I gave you? Yes. Go and deliver it then. You'll find the one it's meant for inside the madrasa. Whoa, that guy like took off. So, so I have to pickpocket this guy? Um, she comes up to me, the white girl, and she's like, hey, this thing just happened to me, and I'm not sure what to do about it because I don't want to get in trouble. This is my first job. And I've already gotten in trouble because I asked um, a waitress when I came here with my friend last week when I was off the clock if we could have some warmer breadsticks. And I guess for some reason that got me in trouble because I guess the waitress thought I was being mean to her. Uh, is everyone the most sensitive little bitch ever at yes, this place? Yes, yes. And so I said, first of all, that's ridiculous that you got written up for that. You can't. You legally cannot be getting in trouble for things you're doing off the clock. You could sue the business for that And if you wanted to. Second of all, it feels like they're bullying you because you're 16. Third of all, um, they should have been speaking English to you because you are the person taking their order. Or... You weren't being racist, but if you're... Did you if, see the flag? I but did. since yeah. you're a little white girl, you know, and you're saying these things, you have to be really careful with these other people because they're just going to call you a racist. Imagine like that's just the world we live in. Imagine, now. though, if I said that to someone who's black. Imagine if we were in the South and I said, hey, since you're a black 16 year old, you got to be really careful what you say around Cletus and his boys. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you imagine? Can you imagine if you took this and said it to anyone else? But like, I had to say that to a little white girl the other day. And. So, it, this was a Friday, and she says to me, well, I'm really worried, and I don't want to get in trouble, and I didn't mean to be mean to these people. This is why people are still so, racist. So, do you think I should go in the office and apologize to them, like, in front of the manager, and say, hey, like, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to be mean or anything? And I was like, sure, I mean, yeah, that might be a good idea if you want to, but I really don't think you should be getting in trouble for this sort of thing. I would not apologize for that. And it, so, she went to the office and apologized. And she was in there for like an hour, you know, talking about how she really didn't mean to be mean to these people and was very sorry and stuff like that. 
she still got written up and was told, if you do something like this again, you're fired. I would just quit. And she told me about that on um, Sunday because I asked her about it. I was like, hey, what happened on Friday? Because I had to leave. Yeah. Like, was everything all right? And she basically told me, like, she got in trouble. And I was like, are you kidding me? You got in trouble? And I said to her, you know, I told my husband about it. And he said, if I were her, I would have just quit. And she was like, you know, I'm kind of thinking about it. I would. I, I genuinely would. And you know what else? I would see if my parents could make a huge ass stink about the restaurant. I would do that, too. I'd be a dick about it. Yeah. Because, like, that's unacceptable. And, it is unacceptable. And the only reason that these people are allowed to do it is because they're darker skinned. Their yeah. skin is darker than hers. So and no you know, one... They, and you know that's true. And I also that's think... That's why people won't say anything about yep. it. I also think it's them bullying her for not being an adult yet for some reason. Because for some reason... I think they're there bullying be her because... H- how old are these people? Uh, the people who were talking to her were like 30 or 40. And what are they doing? They're busing? Yes. So what, explain to people what that is, and I want to say um, something about it. So I just want to say, I think the restaurant that I'm at is a little bit racist, just because... No um, so they're always hiring people of Latina or like Mexican or Spanish descent to do busing, and busing is basically the janitor job, like you're cleaning, like... You clean the the toilets. You take all the t- the um, plates off of the tables. You know, like you clean everything. You know, and there's a very big stereotype that's a little racist of like, oh, that's all Spanish people are good for is cleaning. You know. I don't really think that's the stereotype. I think the stereotype is that's all they do when, yeah. when they work here. But but that's the stereotype. So it kind of right. that's the only people that they hire is. Um, like they only hire Spanish people for cleaning, and so what was your point about them being bussers? Is the fact that they're, yeah. You know, so they're, look, if you, yeah. uh, we have a neighbor who was a we have a neighbor who was a janitor for twenty five years. I respect menial labor. I respect you for doing it, but there are a lot of people who have a lot of self hatred in that field. Have you guys noticed this? Yeah. They go into that field and then they're angry that they're 40 and doing that job. And so they take it out on other people. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sexualizing this kid when I say this, but what I want to say is I've noticed with women, they are very threatened and angry when younger, prettier girls than them yes. appear to have a better situation than them. Yeah. They're angry about it. And what I think it is is these women who are 40 who are doing this manual labor menial job who probably are not appreciated for it which i will say is wrong Mm -hmm. because that's just how it works when you do manual labor nate knows i also think they were Um, just hired because they were racially profiled probably i think that a lot of the times these people are in pain which does not make it okay but have you ever heard the phrase hurting people hurt others? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's the idea of like, you're mad, you're upset, you're mentally in pain from your decisions or where you ended up. So you are subconsciously or consciously going to take it out on people around you because you've had a bad time. And that's what I think this kind of thing is. I think they see this 16 year old girl who is pretty. I mean, it's a you know she is very pretty pretty girl in high school mm-hmm. Head. and that yeah exactly she's so ugly she's so <laughs> disgusting looks like a rhino yes oh good now i'm not a ped there you go now i'm just Thank a bully you. now Thank i'm you. just a grown man bullying a teenager I is that better she, that's like, a lot better no, 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 just she's like, very nice i think that they see this kid and they think i wish i was that kid mm-hmm. and i see so many people do this kind of thing they'll say like i wish i was them so i'm gonna be mean Right. And it's like... Because it makes them feel better. But it it doesn't change anything. You're still a loser. Right. And not because you're a busser, but because you have the mindset of a loser. Right. You go to work angry about where you're at in life, refusing to make a difference in the world, even in the ways you can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's yeah. nothing like, wrong with, like, taking up a, a manual labor, like, janitor job. No, and you can but, make people's lives around you happier and better, and that's making a difference that's positive and it, worth you getting up The problem with it life. is just being a dick. And But because you feel like you can't make a difference and you feel like no one cares about you and probably because your husband is just totally porking some girl half your age, (laughs) you see this girl and you're like, I wish I was her. She has it better than me. She's so pretty. She has this job and it's easier than mine. She gets to make tips on to go. I'm going to be mean. And, Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really... 
I will say, and this is not to throw you under the bus, Jill, I'm a little disappointed you didn't say something to management about that whole thing. Because I would make a stink about that if it was somebody I liked at the job who got written up for that. I would bullshit and say I was there. That didn't happen. That's I what I would do. It, but I knew they knew, no, I was lying that I wasn't actually there. But you were in the restaurant. I was in the restaurant. I just, I didn't want to put my job on the line for it yet. Right. When I had just come back from my month break. Right. Um, and the fact that I was also sick for a week. I, I mean, I've done that, though, before. I've made stinks at different jobs about other people. Even though no one will ever do it for me, I've said before to the bosses, like, I don't think that's very fair. If, yeah. if I I've said out, that. If I find out that they're doing that again to her, though, one more time, I will be making a stink about it and saying, hey, I think this girl's really nice. She, you know, I don't think that, you know, there. she's done really anything wrong. And I think that she's being bullied by these people. And it's not right because I used to be her age and I used to be bullied by people. Well, don't make it this long. <laughs> otherwise, they're going to tune me out. Right no, away. I know. But I'm, I'm just saying, you know. What? I'm just they... saying. Like, you can't, like, you're not Captain Picard. You're not there yet, Jill, where you can make a whole speech. You just got to say something simple. Like, you know, I I've know noticed. That's right. You, you just got to say, I've noticed there's a lot of bullying going on with this kid. These two people are doing it. And I think they're racially profiling her because they're angry at her because they've made a lot of sent statements about it. You could even fucking make it up. If you, I mean, I wouldn't. But I'm saying, like, you could say whatever you want just like they do. Like, these people are making shit up that didn't happen. There's said, nothing to stop you from doing the same thing. She also said to me she really didn't want to come to work. Um, and like, when on Sunday she said, like, I don't want to come to work for my next shift. I wouldn't. And I said to her, just tell them you have diarrhea. I genuinely had diarrhea, and they told me I couldn't come in for 48 hours. So Let's just listen tell them to these that. two, like, thickums. Wait, did, did we already listen to them? No. Oh. Hold why. I wish to see him. To hear him speak. It can be arranged. But we must be careful. There are still those who reject illumination. They would harm him. Then they are ignorant and afraid. You seem sincere, but how do I know I can trust you? It hurts me to even hear you ask the question. Very well. We gather each day in the madrasa. He comes to speak and then leads us into the city that we might cleanse it. Could I join you then? Understand that it is a difficult path we walk. Stop touching his nipples. I feel like this <laughs> This is like uncomfortable how close this is. This is how they're talking. How strong you really are. He's like, hey. Okay, I have a couple of problems here. First off, very easy to identify the Templars if they all wear like like minded uh, hats and <laughs> the same color of Well, clothing. they're wearing the same hat as Jew Bear. Okay. Well, secondly, I don't get that joke because it's not funny because I told it apparently. Secondly, um, I would not have gone to work if I was that girl. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I would have said I quit. I, I genuinely would have said to my boss, I know you won't take me seriously because I'm white, but this is racism. Yeah. This is someone targeting me because I don't speak a language and bullying me for not speaking a language. If I was black, I could sue your ass and your business would be shot. That's what I would genuinely say, and I'm being serious. Well, here's the thing. If she was black, she would have won the whole argument because... They, uh, the management... And this is my problem. It shouldn't matter. The management is all white. They fired the one woman who was not a white person manager. Wow, that's weird. And so they're, all the manager managers are they white. Have clan meetings and in the back? The specific <laughs> company so. that I work for, their restaurant chain is extremely um, interested in looking very, very diverse. Mm -hmm. um, like they want which like, to be fair they all are interested in that now because that gives them brownie points not because they actually care yeah they try right. really really hard to make it look like they're the most diverse company on the planet mm -hmm. uh, which actually the award goes to Walmart but anyway <laughs> <laughs> and so the management I think basically had to side <laughs> with the people who weren't white because otherwise corporate might come in and tell them oh well you're being racist well you're the ones you're who just fired, fired the only non-white manager so what did you expect you're going to take it out on a 16-year-old? Yeah, because yeah. the yeah, words... they're easy targets. In the words of Sheck West, 16-year-olds. <laughs> Remember when he starts his song? Yeah. This is what he was talking about, deep stuff. <laughs> he was, was talking about deep, deep stuff. stuff in Mobambo. He was talking I, about the deep state? I still don't understand why they fired that one. The deep one... state is just what they call my colon oh, okay. when I'm at the gay bar. <laughs> I still don't understand why they fired that one woman, too. Um... <laughs> just say, like, if you're in the deep state, he's in the back. Because... <laughs> 
you know, I, I wasn't a huge fan of her management style, but I thought she was nice enough. You know, notice how Jill was only not a fan of the management style of the non-white man. Yeah, that's interesting, Jill. I'm not a big Jill. fan Can of I the explain? management style of the white dude, either. Um, <clears throat> okay, wow. But, oh, that because makes sense. Yeah, you know, well, I wasn't a huge sense. fan of her management style, but I thought she was nice enough, and I don't think she did anything that really warranted getting fired. But the the way you know somebody got fired in this line of business is if the managers say they're off to better and brighter things. That's like Lock code on. Lock for. On. That's code for that person got fired. From okay, this whole better thing, and brighter this, thing. This what whole, is that? that sounds like they shot him. Like your dog <laughs> like, went to live on the farm. <laughs> It does. It does. It sound it like does. Like, so, what is but it? listen to this. I think the management was being racist for this because here's my understanding of that. This person was she Latina or was she black? Uh, I think she was Indian. Okay. So, okay. So here's the thing. Her family was not super well off, is my understanding. Probably not. And she gave them a lot of free food. And my understanding is that's the reason she was fired. Was that's for the giving rumor. was for giving her family too much free food. Who saw me? And Ooh. here's what's insane about that. So this is a chain of restaurant, dude. You're gonna run out of these. This is a chain of restaurants that is and partnered with the. No, 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 you can't. You can't say who they're partnered with. No, just, no, 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 I'm no, not no. saying exactly who they're partnered with. I'm just saying they're partnered with a company that relieves um, poor people from starvation. Right. Okay. Thank you. You named this company by name earlier, and Nate and I had to get. I'm cutting it out. So what I'm trying to, hey, there's a flag there. You meant to do all this to find that flag. Yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. Um, so what I'm saying is, and what Jill is saying is, this is extremely hypocritical to punish someone whose family is economically struggling, so you give them some free food from a company that will not miss it, and you're not stealing. You have, as a manager, the privilege to give free meals out. Yeah. That is a privilege of being management. And it's not just, well, Jay said it was. No, literally when you're hired at this place, that is one of your rights and privileges as a manager is you can dispense free food as you see fit. Right. But they write basically within reason so they can get your ass for it if they want. Because that's what all these companies do. Yeah, they write their loopholes. They write their rules with loopholes for them, not for you. For them so they can enforce the rule on you and bludgeon you with it mm -hmm. as a punishment. So that's what they did to this woman, is they said basically, and th this is what everyone's saying at the restaurant, could it be false? Sure, but no management has, has denied it, and they definitely know the rumors going on. Yeah. Um, you bludgeoned this woman with the rules because she gave her economically struggling family food, and she happened to be the one non-white manager. Yeah. So to me, what I think, this is what I think. In the North, there is a lot of racist people who don't know they're racist on every side of the political spectrum with every skin color. Mm -hmm. On the South, I think there's a lot of people who are racist who know they're racist and a lot of them are white. I don't think there's nearly as many people who are really... I th How do I say this? Like, I think that racism is more open in the South and I think it's more open from white people. Not everywhere, but right. in a lot of places. I think in the North... When people know they're racist, they're more careful about it. And a lot of people are racist and don't know it. And those people can be black, white, whatever. Mm -hmm. And what I think is there's a lot of racist management at this place who doesn't really like minority groups, but they are so afraid of looking racist that anytime somebody else does something that could be perceived as bad, they punish them for it. Yeah. Even though they themselves run their restaurant in a managerial style that is racist. Because I'm sorry, but if you're firing the only non-white person for giving some food to their poor family, there is a racial element to that they, decision. They also right. could've... You know there is, because those other managers give out food. And mm -hmm. they also could have, instead of firing her, they have a program, too. I won't say what it's called, obviously, uh, but they have a special program for workers who are struggling to sign up for getting a little bit of extra money um, from, like, the people who are kind enough to give it out of their paychecks to people who, like, are maybe having some sort of problem, like they can't afford food or, or they were in an accident, stuff like mm -hmm. that. They could have offered her that program. No. Nope. You know? No, let's fire her. I want to know Nate's thoughts on all this. Oh, we, we... I, I wanted to say one more thing, though, before okay, Nate's thoughts. But Nate never got to say his thoughts on any of this. <laughs> I want to say one more thing, though. There's also another person... You're yelling. Who, there's also another person who is not white 
who has been trying for the entirety of the time that I have been working there to become a manager. He's supposed to become a manager, but has not yet. And actually got told by management, you're not allowed to wear um, like the management shirts anymore. Oh, geez. Oh, no. You have oh, to no. wear the stuff that all the other people wear. Like, you can't come in wearing just whatever you want, like management can, because it's unprofessional. But why, why won't they make him a manager? Is it just because he's not white? I kind of think so. I kind of thought so, then, yeah. Then why are they punishing this 16-year-old girl for not knowing Spanish? Yeah, that's I, what I'm I saying. I really do believe it's because they themselves are racist. I mean, that's what it comes off as to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it comes off as. Nate, what are your thoughts on all of this? I don't really have a lot of thoughts because I'm just so angry with this mission. Okay, fair enough. So I'm just, like, angry. Mm -hmm. Um... And I, I want to, and I'm so sick and tired of these crazy people, mm -hmm. and I'm also sick and tired of these beggar women. Mm -hmm. It's beggar, yeah. Beggar women. So, so, so you don't care about any of this? No, I this. do. Oh, if okay. I happen to beat this right now, okay, I killed all the. Okay, okay, whoa, whoa, I killed all the people. <sighs> let me just take things easy here. Okay. Do you know how to get down the ladder? Okay, good. good. Let me just, let me just kind of. Take things easy here. Okay. Okay. We're you take just... things easy. Are you taking it easy? I'm taking it easy here. Oh, no, no. Oh that my was not gosh. easy. Oh that was not gosh. easy. Not easy. Target angry. Target I know, angry. I know. Come on. Let me just get back to this guy. Oh, These no. These stupid, crazy people. Okay. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nate would be good in a homeless shelter. <laughs> he got it. We finally Wait, got this. Hear, yes. This is what I know about your target. The scholar Joubert is known to wear rich, golden robes and carries with him a large pouch. This distinguishes Joubert from the other scholars of Damas. Now, if you'd excuse me, I must see my doctor about my back. I must see my doctor about my back. That is constantly hurting. Okay. You got it blown out because he visited me, the deep state, <laughs> no, at the bar. <laughs> the deep state. <laughs> Okay, do you want to play? Yes. All right, I'm ready to hear Nate's thoughts on the racism of this restaurant company. Well, and all of this stuff, all, everything we talked about. We talked about, like, how all these places are always, like, running things based off of, like, skin color, like, on both sides, and all these people, like, this whole thing, like, the, the, the fact that they did this to a kid is what makes me so mad. It's like, is nothing sacred? This is a child. You're bullying really, a child for not knowing Spanish. Yeah, it made me really upset. I wanted to try and be her friend because I feel like a lot of people are unnecessarily mean to her. I, too, befriend minors. At work. <laughs> and she also told me she doesn't have any friends at school either because oh. people are just really unnecessarily mean to her at school. What news, I'll tell you. I've learned much about my enemy. Share what you know, then. Jubayer has become obsessed with purging the city of its knowledge. A most terrible crime. Now I see why Al Mualim wants you to remove him. He's using the city scholars to assist him. They go out into the streets, harassing the people and collecting all their written works. I fear he intends to destroy them all. He must be stopped. That's why I'm here. He's to hold a meeting soon at the Madrasa Al Qalasa. It's where I'll go. It's where I'll take his life. I'll leave you alone to prepare. Bring glory to the Brotherhood. Have you guys noticed every one of these glitches and like our legs give out? And like we like go down an inch and then come back up? Yeah, I've noticed that. Did Nate have any opinion on the racism of these people uh, or, or are you just like done with it? I don't know, like I I feel like I've already shared all my opinions on these on the channel before. Oh, okay. So we can never talk about it again. We can never talk about it again. You know, one thing I do want to say though is I, I have noticed I have noticed that people in general is ageist a word? Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Ageism is a word. Uh, people in general, I think, have more ageism when it comes to like their jobs rather than like anything else. Because I've worked at multiple different jobs where like there were people that I've working with who've all been like in high school. Um, and I've noticed every single one of those, everyone always, like, makes some, like, wisecrack or something of, like, you know, like, oh, I gotta get back to school, huh? You know, like, all these people out there working with or something. 
So it's like, it almost seems as if... Oh, are we in like a main target here? I... I thought... Yeah? Okay. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. so oh, wait, oh, yeah. Okay. Every single text in this city must be destroyed. My friend, you must not do this. Much knowledge rests within these parchments. Put there by our ancestors for good reason. And what reason is this? They are beacons meant to guide us, to save us from the darkness that is ignorance. No, these bits of paper are covered in lies. They poison your minds, and so long as they exist, you cannot hope to see the world the way it truly is. How can you accuse these scrolls of being weapons? They are tools of learning. You turn to them for answers and salvation. You rely more upon them than yourselves. This makes you weak and stupid. You trust in words, drops of ink. Do you ever stop to think of who put them there? Wait, that book keeps respawning, look. No. You simply accept their words without question. And what if those words speak falsely, as they often do? This is dangerous. You are wrong. These texts give the gift of knowledge. We need them. You love your precious writings? You do anything for them? Yes. Uh, yes, of course. Then join them! <laughs> any man who speaks as he is just as much a threat. Do any else among you wish to challenge me? Good. Your orders are simple enough. Go out into the city. Collect any remaining writings and add them to the piles in the streets. When you're done, we'll send a cart to collect them, that they may be destroyed. Floating. Whoa! He used the force on that guy. <laughs> <clears throat> this is such a dumb plan, because there are books everywhere. Yeah. You're not... Whoa! You're not doing anything here. Well, and also... He... Okay. What that guy was basically doing is basically like what everyone in today's world thinks of themselves, where he basically says, these books are corrupting your mind, but you should listen to what I have to say because I am the objective truth. I know what I'm talking about. Right. And I know that these books are corrupting your mind, and if you disagree with me, I'm going to push you in this fire. It's basically the mindset of like people nowadays where they think they're all correct. Well, yeah, and it's like, uh, where they will basically ban books and ban knowledge. Yeah. Um, so anyways, what, what, I was, what I was saying was, I do think there's an element with people at work, specifically older people at work, whenever they see, like, kids coming into work, where they, like, instantly turn into Dave Chappelle and, like, the comedy factor, and, and they instantly think they're, like, hilarious. And I, because I constantly see people making fun of, like, kids. And it's like, well, these people are just kids. Like, they're just trying to get money. Right. Yeah, they have classes. You did too at one point. Like, whatever. Wait, I thought your whole point was that when you were 12, your dad was making you, like, go work at, like, the coal mine or whatever. Right. Like, that's always what they say, too. Is like, I was working when I was this, but then they give these kids a hard time. Right. And it's just like, well, I don't know. I, I guess I don't really see what the joke is, like, with picking on and making fun of kids. Like, I think it really just comes down to they're easy targets. You know, it's easy when you're 40 years at a job and here comes, like, a kid who's brand new. They don't really know anything in life. <clears throat> they don't know the relationships of work. They don't know anything about that. So they're easy targets. So it's just you're a 40-year-old bully who's going nowhere that, That's exact. That's exactly what it is. You are literally a 40-year-old bully... You have nothing going for you in life, so what do you do? You make fun of people that are easy targets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's one thing if it's, like, your friend. Like, you know, like, I've, I've made friends at all of my jobs, and we've kind of given each other some, you know, grief here and there. Like, we've joked around with each other. But it's like, I know the person that we're joking around with. It's a whole other thing to be like... Oh, I'm 30 years old, and here comes a 16-year-old here. I'm going to specifically target them and pick on them and be mean. 
And it's like, well, you don't, you don't know anything about them. Like, if you actually got to know them, and that's just how your relationship developed, okay, that's fine. But I kind of think there's an element of people in general see kids at jobs as easy targets. You know, so they they go out of their way to basically, like, specifically pick on them and joke around with them because they want to be, like, the comedy act for the day. I also think it's mainly women. It is, this, it, yes. It's, this is my experience, is yes. that women are threatened by younger women. Yes. And, and I think that this is a nature thing. I think that... So, <clears throat> think about it from... Is Cosmo sneezing? What was that? I don't know. Think about this from an evolutionary standpoint. So, when you are an animal and there is a younger, more fertile animal that you subconsciously see as competition, you get upset. Right. And I think that these women are especially that way, where they think with their uterus... Like, they think with, oh, like, they don't even know they're doing it. They think with, like, the the idea that society and evolution has put off on them of, well, you're only valuable as good as you are looks and as good as you are for making babies. Right. And so what they think is, I my personal opinion is, like, this example we're talking about where these 40-year-old women targeted this 16-year-old girl, I think they're looking at her and thinking she's younger than us. She's prettier than us. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, like, got a whole future ahead of her. She's going to go meet some man or woman or non-binary person or whoever and, like, live a life and move on to better things than working at this restaurant. I'm 40. I can't really have kids anymore. I'm stuck at this job. I feel worthless. Yeah. I'm threatened by her. Don't you think that's I what think, I doing? think there is absolutely Yeah, but I think you're going to get called a sexist in the comments. I don't care. That's genuinely, like, a lot of women think that way. Yeah. And, 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 what, and, and it might even be subconsciously. Well, yes, but, like, the problem, the reason they think that way in a lot of cases is because that's stuff that society's pushed off, and also it's stuff that evolution has wired into people. Yeah. You know, it's like the, like, in, there's a what? lot of, there's a lot of uh, thought process in us. The guy's based, running away. There's a lot of thought process in us based on reproduction or based on, our societal value based on how um, how valuable we are to like reproduction or how valuable we are to different things and I think a lot of especially women that affects more I don't think that's sexist I think you could do entire studies and you will find that women are more adversely affected by thinking I'm old or I'm ugly or I'm right. whatever than men are I mean women say that they literally say I'm more affected by this than men Right. so me agreeing with you is not sexist I agree with you I genuinely think that a lot of men are not nearly as affected, especially in the workplace, when men, most men, when they see a younger man at the workplace, every time I've worked with an older man, they've had almost more of a fatherly, nice, kind instinct or older brother type vibe. Right. Like they're joking around, they're having a fun time, they're being nice, you know, they're making jokes about like, oh, you know, help me with this, I'm old, I have back problems, you don't, that kind of thing. Every time I've worked with older women, and younger women come in, they're gossiping about them. Yeah. They're threatened. They don't like them right away. They're cautious of them. Um, and I've never, ever, in all of my jobs, experienced that with older men. I'm sure it's a thing. I have never experienced it, though. It's always been women. And it's almost always been targeted at other women that yeah. are younger. Right. Every time. These guys are, like, really trying to reenact the Piper Perry couch scene. <laughs> Well, every time, that's what it is. And I genuinely think with Jill's example of that girl, I think that's what it is. It's just, I'm threatened by you, so I'm going to lash out. Yeah. Why? Why have you done this? Men must be free to do what they believe. It is not our right to punish one for thinking what they do, no matter how much we disagree. Then what? You, of all people, should know the answer. Educate them. Teach them right from wrong. It must be knowledge that frees them, not force. They do not learn, fixed in their ways as they are. You are naive to think otherwise. It's an illness for which there is but one cure. You're wrong, and that's why you must be put to rest. Am I not unlike those precious books you seek to save? A source of knowledge with which you disagree, yet you are rather quick to steal my life. A small sacrifice to save many. It is necessary. Is it not ancient scrolls that inspire the Crusaders? That fill Salah Adin and his men with a sense of righteous fury? 
Their texts endanger others, bring death in their wake. I too was making a small sacrifice. It matters little now. Your deed is done, and so am I. It's like so annoying to get to the assassination, but the, the monologues are so good that every time you do it, you feel like all your pain for the last hour and a half was justified. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that's kind of my biggest criticism of this game is just... I feel like... Part of the reason why this is my least favorite Assassin's Creed game, because it is, is just... The assassinations themselves are good, the story's good, the characters are good, the world is good. All that stuff is good. You know, you, and even with, like, the combat, I will say the combat is fine, it's just I'm bad at it. Um, it's fine, but it's not It's not this it's amazing not, thing no, that people are trying no, to No, it's not. Like it and it's even better in, like, 2 and Brotherhood and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just bad at it, so I will, I will fully admit that. Part of the reason why I don't... Part of the reason why this is my least favorite Assassin's Creed game is actually because all the missions suck. Like, except for, like, the eavesdropping missions, but it's, it, that's just because those are easy. Well, what makes them suck? The <clears> fact <throat> that you're detected every two the seconds? The fact that you are detected every two seconds. The informer missions suck because they're always, like, some lazy douchebag that's just like, Oh, my leg hurts right now, so you have to do this mission for me. Or, oh, I don't know, I, I gotta tell you this important information, but... You need to collect all my flags, and it's just like, do it yourself, you dumb idiot, so I don't have to run around here for an hour as I'm being detected every three seconds, and then I have to spend five minutes running away from these people, and then I get detected within three seconds, and then spend five minutes running away. It's just like, it's annoying. Julie, you said this is your least favorite Assassin's Creed game, right? Yeah, it's because that guy wasn't fluffy and didn't have a hat on, like a tiny hat. That makes you mean Jubear? Yeah, he did, he wasn't fluffy and he didn't have a tiny hat. I on. thought my joke, <laughs> I thought my Jubear joke was funny. I was literally picturing Winnie the Pooh with like a hat and a dreidel and a. Uh, uh, well, I, I just kind of think that ruined the whole game for me is the fact that he didn't end up being a Jewish bear. Are you trying to be mean to me and no. like bring it back to my joke to make fun of the joke you didn't like? No, I was trying to continue the joke to make it funny. Oh, so I, I thought you were being mean to me. To make it funny. Now you're bullying. <laughs> Because you were sad that we didn't laugh enough. I before. thought it was a funny She's joke. She's being ageist. And Nate did laugh at the joke. <laughs> Nate did laugh at the joke. You took the joke and you were mean to me. No, I was just trying to be funny. I know. Well, Jill, just genuinely though, didn't you say this is your least favorite AC you've played? Yeah, this is one of my favorite Assassin's Creed characters and my least favorite Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. I find a lot of parts of it kind of boring, actually. I love him uh, in in Revelations. I think you'll like him there. And my biggest problem with it is honestly just the fact that um, I wasn't able to finish the game because I did the last boss fight. It was really fucking hard, and then the game didn't save. And so I never got to see the ending. And it really, like, made me so mad. And it, the reason it made me so mad is because you have to do all of this bullshit yeah. the entire game. And it's really, really hard. It's actual especially, garbage. Especially for somebody who's not very good at combat like this. You know, I, I'm more of a do stealth kind of person or do, like, a, you know, different kinds of combat. Like, I, I'm all just starting to get good at things like Black Flag, you know, because I'm not very good at, at the combat in these types of games, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. So when you, I'm bad at the combat. So when you downgrade to a game like this that's got worse controls than the ones you've played before, it makes it a lot harder. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that it makes it a bad game. It just makes it a game that frustrates me specifically. And is not as fun. Yes. And is not as well fleshed out. Yes. yes. Altair, tell me you've met with success. Yes, Jubayer's fires are extinguished. His life as well. Excellent news! I had no doubt you'd succeed. You should have seen it. The scholars followed him so readily. It wasn't just books they fed to fire either, but any man who opposed them. Such ignorance breeds only evil. You've done a good thing this day. As with my other targets, he believed he was doing the right thing, clearing a path to a better future. Of course he would. Such is the landscape of a madman's mind. The things I've seen these past few weeks, it's as if all the land has gone mad. 
And this is why we fight to end the war, that sanity might return. The people are desperate for direction. It's easy for men like Jubayer to prey on this and turn them towards evil. You should go, Altair. Return to Al Mualim. Tell him what you saw. Let him know the good you've done this day. Safety and peace, Rafiq. Upon you as well. Wasn't there a guy named Rafiq in The Lion King? No, it's Rafiki. Oh, sorry. So, Jill, um, I, genuine question before we talk to Al Mualim. Do you think that I was being sexist? Because I don't think I was. I do think that reproductive issues affect women more, and I think that they are more subconsciously affected by them. I no, mean, there's I don't, research around that. I don't think you were being that. sexist, but every single time a man talks about reproduction and issues that involve women, automatically all women turn off their ears and decide, oh, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about because he's never had a period. He's never had to have babies. So obviously he couldn't ever possibly imagine what we've had to be, be through, mm -hmm. even if he has a point. Not a lot of time, Vic. Understand there's a narrow hole now. Wherever it's hidden, time to retrieve it. I'm working on it. And when it's done, He'll be taken care of. I want that progress report by tomorrow morning. I've got some work I need to do. So you've got the rest of the night to yourself. Just so you know, as I was listening to both, while you were talking, they decided to finally say something applying to the narrative, of course. And they said that, that it's time to find the item. They told him that, Vidic. Mm -hmm. He said, I need a little more time, basically. And they said, well, how about when it's found? And he said, he'll be taken care of. So basically, they just said they'll kill Desmond. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Which is something that we already assumed they would do. I think there's a problem with the Animus. Nope. It's working fine. I'm pretty sure it just ejected me I'm when I... I'm pretty sure you should shut up. You ready to finally tell me what's going on? We have to stop them, Desmond. When they access that last memory of yours... They're just getting started. They want to change everything. The way we live, the way we think, the way we are. You've gotten the lecture from Vidic about what's wrong with the world, how we need order and discipline. So they're going to give it to us. Only we don't have a say in the matter. How? The Templar treasure. They think it... Miss Stillman, here. I need you to upload Desmond's files to the database. Got it. I think it's really funny that um, they're basically saying that they're going to kill Desmond after the end of the story, but they wouldn't be able to until the end of Assassin's Creed 3 anyway, because that's when they're actually able to find the Apple of Eden. They're not able to find it in this game. And then he dies at the end of that game anyway. So it's like either way, he dies when he's not useful anymore. This is true. Well, actually, I think they isn't find a, a few apples. Isn't that a different apple? They find a few apples. Oh, I that... didn't realize there was there was different apples. Yeah, there's multiple. I thought there was only one. No, no, there's a bunch. So the what? You're using me to find this Templar treasure? What do they call it? The Peace of Eden? Yes. Well, it's looking like it's at Messiah. So I don't know why they're wasting all this time with me. Why don't they just send their people to pick it up? They can't. It's not that simple. The artifact from Messiah, they had it. It was destroyed in the accident. Then what are they hoping for me, you know, for my ancestor, to tell them? They're hoping he'll show them where the other ones are. You mean there's more than one of these things? Oh, Desmond, you have no idea. Is there a problem, Mr. No Dillon? one. Everything's Denver on my end. Then, where are the files? Miss Stillman, is your butthole ready? <laughs> I like how she hung up on him. Like, why is she, like... That's gotta hurt her back. Well, women stand that way in order to look sexy. Like, literally. Sorry, I'm being sexist, according to Jill. That's how people stand, sit sometimes to look hot. It means everything's fine. Why Denver? It's a reference to Denver International Airport. There's an underground facility there. It's where the accident happened. Is that did you see my? I, I broke my neck there. He was like, "Oh, <laughs> wait." You tired? No. Aren't well, you tired of telling people like what sleeping. to do? Can I take her pen? Aren't you basically like sleeping when you're in the Animus and like dreaming this weird stuff? No. Uh, well, they make jokes about Desmond getting fat and like Brotherhood and Revelations from being in the Animus so much. So I guess kind of. So wait a minute. I have to do something here. Well, is you, this is the... Is this sequence eight? Or seven or whatever? Uh, 
Because this is the sequence where I think where you can get into there. I think I have to go into my room, don't I? First. Maybe. I can't take the pen. There was no button. So I think I have to go in my room. And she did make that comment about you apparently being tired all of a sudden. Is this door locked now? I just don't feel like you'd be all that tired after just laying around. Right? No, probably not. I mean, I wouldn't be. Is she gone? She's already gone. Oh, she must wow. have sprinted. She skedaddled. Yeah, go grab the pen now. Go grab the pen. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Grab the pen. I'm going to grab the pen. This 15th pen is grab wait, the 15th it's not there. Pen. Wait, did she take her pen? I can go on the computer, though. It might be near Warren's desk. Welcome, Lucy. See if there's anything new. Nope. No. Wait, what's this? Problems down there? Wonder why it is everyone laughs at you? I'll let you guess. Let's just say she's probably getting it bigger and better from someone else that isn't you. How can you hope to compete? Rest assured there are some good ways. Click the link to see. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This is a code. We will um, bet he re soon here soon we will bet here soon or get here soon we will will be there soon, maybe. yeah be, be there soon no because the next one is oh yeah yeah never mind we will be there soon can you send a rescue so so she's asking for someone to get her out basically is that, is that what it is yeah. wait wait we can go down here uh, so, like, if we go all the way to back, uh, need intel on DIA event, at least 20 dead in accident, assume this is site of launch, if not launch, then certainly assembly should try and infiltrate. DIA is Denver International Airport. Oh, what is the purpose of launch? Low Earth Orbit Transmitter for Artifact. So they want to use a transmitter to use the Apple of Eden on people. Yeah. From the atmosphere. Extension of conditioned response experiments from five years ago. If successful, they control everything. What do you mean everything? Our minds. Uh, what about Desmond? They're using him to locate another artifact. I've been delaying, but they are close now. Does he know about us? And that says no, and then it's good. Keep it that way for now. Can you send rescue? And then it's this. And then we will be there soon. Yeah. Huh. That's, That's probably Rebecca okay. and Sean. Uh, I was trying to click to see if there was anything else, because that wasn't there last time. No, that was a new thing. By the way, I've never seen that email chain, even though I've played through this game a few times. I just never noticed it. Um, <clears throat> we already read those. Yep, I'm just making sure there's nothing else. I don't think there is. Let's go look at Warren's desk. Warren's desk. This is going to be fun. Oh, and there's no pen. The chair's a little sticky. Probably from all this time with Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, my pen needs to be heated. Is that why Lucy's back is arched like that? Yeah. <laughs> all right. He does have deleted items, too. I know, and the classified information. I feel like we read those. We did. Layla, your pen, daily headline, password, false alarm. What's... La Layla, here's a picture of my pen. <clears throat> it's about those idiot. Oh, wait. So basically, they're talking about things that are going on in the company. Yeah. Guess the shit's really hit the fan this time. Someone managed to leak a bunch of documents on the fluoride enhancement studies, and now the pharmaceuticals division is under investigation by the feds. They've shut the entire place down. Did you see what was in those reports? What the hell were they thinking? They pretty much poisoned the entire town. I remember reading that. Wow. Uh, if you've been watching the news, stock's going to take a hit from this for sure. Want to grab lunch today? <laughs> it's about those idiots in the pills division. We're putting out a press release about the satellite, telling them the launch has been delayed until the 21st so that we can make improvements to the coverage area. Some stuff about less dropped calls for the benefit of our consumers. Uh Okay. I like how he ignored the lunch. He didn't want lunch. Like, hey, want to grab lunch today? He just ignores it. Already ate. So, is this the point where we can get out into the meeting room? 
Maybe not. she dropped the plan on the floor. I thought we already had what we needed. Is the number 15 written on it? So maybe it's not the mission. I don't. We already stole Warren Vidic's pen, remember? Yeah. We don't need that other pen. But we need a password. Where are we supposed to get it? Do I don't know. Look it up? There's an email from Lucy. After memory block 7. What memory block are we in right now? I don't know. Because after memory block 7, there's an email from Lucy in his deleted items dated September 7th that contains the code to the conference room door. There's a second email from the inbox dated September 6th which contains the password to the computer in the conference room. So there's a deleted email from Lucy from September 7th. Um, what's the deleted emails from September 7th? So maybe... It's only September 6th. Okay, well maybe it's the next sequence then. Maybe we're not even there yet. It must be. By the way, there's a camera right there. Do they really not know, did not check that? I don't think so. So they just don't check because they think I'm locked in my room? I think so, yeah. I feel like it, this part of the game would have been a lot better if they didn't put this camera right here flashing because it makes... I know it's a dumb video game about like going back in time and your DNA and stuff, yeah. but it makes me feel like they just see me walking around. They do. Maybe they... nobody's connecting the cameras. Well, that's But that doesn't make any sense. You'd think that they would care, otherwise why'd they set all these up? Maybe he's on his lunch break. It could <laughs> Maybe. be. I don't know. It just seems dumb. And the only like... time you ever go into the camera mode is when he goes in the shower. Or in his bed. Oh, that's true. Yeah, when you go to your bed, it does do... Wait. Oh. What's this? Oh, it's oh, just, it's just your bed. bed. I thought I was doing my daily oh. prayer or something. Which where we go, by the way. Okay. Time's wasting, Mr. Miles. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. We're nearly done, you know. And then what? You'll see. Maybe they'll even let you watch when it begins. It's not as terrible as you think. Look, I know you're not gonna let me leave. So why not tell me what's going on? Humor me. I'm not an idiot, Mr. Miles. I think you've already learned quite a bit. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course not. All right, let me ask you something else then. Yes? Some of the stuff I'm seeing in the Animus, sometimes it seems wrong. Untrue, like the history is off somehow. It doesn't- It doesn't what, Mr. Miles? Match up with what you read on an online encyclopedia? What your high school history teacher taught you? Let me ask you something. Do these supposed experts have access to secret knowledge kept hidden from the rest of us? There are books. Letters, documents, all sorts of source material from back then. Some of it seems to contradict what the Animus is showing me. Anyone can write a book, and they can put whatever they want on its pages. Anything. <laughs> Used to be, we thought the world was flat. Some people still do. Yes, and they publish books about it. Or that the moon landing was a hoax. I believe there's also a book claims the world was created in seven days. A bestseller, too. Where's this going, Doc? The point, I suppose, is that you shouldn't trust everything you hear, everything you read. What's that your ancestors said? Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Yes, exactly. It's part of what makes the Animus so spectacular. There's no room for misinterpretation. There's always room. Touché, Mr. Miles. Now that I've answered your question, can we begin? Because the Templars changed history. Yeah, well, at least I'm taller than you. <laughs> think that's why he's mad? I think so, yeah. He's like threatened by me, like the girls at Jill's work. He's like, it's a, a younger man here, gonna take away my Lucy from me. He's more vi a vital and more able to reproduce than me. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. He's like, Lucy, leave the room. Let's see how good you are, Desmond. <laughs> Sit in a seat before he gets to it. Look, I'm his protege. We look out the window together. <laughs> I like the idea that I've I've got Stockholm Syndrome. I just really like Warren Vidic. Well, yeah, who doesn't like Warren Vidic? 